anything in here. Come on. It'll be better once I've made the fire up. Oh, Mike, it's going to snow. Look, why can't we have central heating put in ourselves? And then we can argue with the police authority about it afterwards. Jackie. I know, I know. Because it's a police house, everything must be applied for in triplicate, and everyone has to have the same. And all we're going to have is a miserable Christmas. All right, all right, look, I'll, I'll have a word with Craddock. Well, he probably thinks keeping the troops in Spartan conditions improves efficiency. Well, I'll tell you what improves my efficiency. I'm too cold. Well, I'll soon warm you up. Christmas present. Just try and go to sleep. That's the best thing. But everything will be sorted out soon. Now, I need you to be a good girl and and not to worry. Go to sleep, darling. Do you reckon men are so unreliable, Claude? Yeah, you must be able to answer that one, Greengrass. You must have caused enough misery to the female population in your time. Haven't you forgotten that yet? At least I gave her a laugh, which is more than can be said for you. I'm like an elephant, Greengrass. I never forget. But you can still have an enjoyable Christmas, you know, Gina, without him. If you put your mind to it. You're not my dad, Oscar. Oh, you're chatting gear around that. Mm. Doesn't matter how many drinks you buy me, I can't do it, Claude. Wouldn't be right. Yeah, but it's not as if it's used very often, is it? I mean, it just sits in the garage collecting rust. Even so, what would people think? About time you stop worrying about what people think. It's a question of moral principle. Is it, Eckers? Like, it's a question of ten bob an hour split two ways. <laughs> I'm telling you, Craddock, poaching's a very serious matter and it's high time something was done about it. Indeed, Your Lordship, I fully intend to... Well, just take a look at this. Henry found him a couple of days ago. That reckons a bullet grazed his hind leg. Oh, poor little mite. He's the lucky one. Better than being shot and butchered on the spot, which is what happened to most of his fellows. Exactly how many head of deer do you think you've lost, Your Lordship? In the last month. That was a two dozen or so, hard to be precise. Well, what makes my blood boil, though, is it's indiscriminate. Does, last season's half-grown fawns, whole herds being decimated. Wouldn't it make more sense, from the poacher's point of view, to uh, concentrate on bigger animals? If they knew what they were doing, yes. But a mature animal's harder to stalk. So they're just shooting anything and everything they can hit. Or perhaps they just want to make me mad. Well, they've succeeded, I can tell you. Decorations. I don't want a free for all. Thank you for coming to me. As you can see, end of terms have been hectic. When you called, she sounded hysterical, quite possibly. Well, I'm very worried. 
It's the phone calls. Every night he calls me and calls me. Just this litany of threats and abuse. When's it going to stop? Well, unfortunately, divorce can be a very messy business. You said once the injunction came through. Look, don't worry. It's just a question now of getting it enforced. I try not to think of the effect all this is having on Katie. Well, your husband's very angry and upset, but men in his position usually back off once the courts and police get involved. I hope you're right. Well, in a state this size, you reckon to lose a few deer each year? And I pretty much know too. But like his lordship was saying, this lot, it's more like extermination. Yeah, but why? Is it, is it some greedy commercial operation want to bag as many as it can? Probably. But are we ever going to catch him? I've been in these woods every night for the last month. I've heard him all right. That's the nearest I've got. I feel like I've, I've walked for miles. Well, I reckon if it is a commercial operation, we'd stand a better chance of tackling them from the other end of the chain. In the patrol car. How do you mean? Well, if we can't actually catch him poaching the deer, then maybe we can catch him selling the venison. Aye. I expect you know Julia Kendall. She took over as headmistress of Ashfordley High about six months ago. I believe we have been introduced, yes. I'm acting for her in a divorce petition. She's divorcing her husband on the grounds of mental and physical cruelty. I wasn't aware she had a husband. Well, he works abroad mainly. He's only home for a couple of months a year. Ideal marriage, you would have thought? Yes, well, I've had to obtain a court injunction to restrain him from harassing her. What I need now is for you to enforce it. I presume you can prove he's been breaking the law? Well, she's scared out of her wits. What more do you need? Angry wives have been known to exaggerate. I should tell you, Sergeant, if you refuse to act in this matter, I shall take it up with the Chief Constable. I'm not refusing to act. you better tell me where this Mr Kendall lives so I can go and have a word with him. Will that satisfy you, Mrs Bradley? For the time being, Sergeant. Then. Wives, Ventress. You mean Jackie's hat? I mean, should they necessarily be believed? Oh, I don't know, Sarge. I always try and believe Mrs. Ventress in the hope that she'll believe me. Saves aggravation. What are you doing, Ventress? It's a bit quiet, Sarge. I thought I'd get the decorations up. Paper chains? They're for children. How do you think they're appropriate in a police station? They always have paper chains. But it's a hearse. I can't drive that. Trust, trust me, Agnes. If you, if you can drive this, you can drive out. But isn't it the one Mr. Scripps always uses? The one he used for our Silas only last month. Uh, no, 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 this, this is his spare. He, he's got, he's got, he, you've got two of them, haven't you, Bernie? Uh, look, 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 why, why, don't, why don't you sit in it, love? And I guarantee, once you forget that bit in the back, you, you'll never have driven a car like it. Hello, Bernie. What's going on? Don't ask. I only agreed because he got me drunk. Really? That's not like you. Hiya. Hi, Maggie. Keeping a lookout. I still don't know if he's coming yet. Well, if he hasn't phoned, maybe he'll just turn up. Yeah, well, blokes, eh? <laughs> Hey, looking good, lads. Hello. Is, uh, is Craddock about? No, oh, I'd avoid him if I were you. He's walking round like a bear with a sore head. Don't know what's got into him. He's even beat old house paper chains. No. Ah, Bradley. Good of you to put in an appearance. Uh, if I could have a minute, Sarge. What's this? It's Holly, Sarge. I got it from the gamekeeper at Ashfordley Hall. We thought you preferred it to paper chains. 
You were sent up to Ashfordley Hall to catch poachers, not strip it of unnecessary vegetation. Which is what I wanted to talk to you about, Sarge. I've, um, I've had an idea. Oh, have you, Bradley? Well, it'll just have to wait. I've had your wife in here this morning, in her professional capacity. Threatened me with the chief constable, she did. So you better come with me so we can assure her we do take complaints seriously. Come on, don't think about it. This is the vengeful husband. Doesn't look that vicious to me. You're putting me in a very difficult position here, Sarge. Well, you should have thought of that before you married her, Bradley. When did you and your wife separate? About a month ago. We were just getting on each other's nerves. I thought it best if I moved out. I know this place looks pretty squalid, but I'm used to roughing it. I'm in mineral exploration, which means ten months of the year in the African bush. It's not exactly the life for a married man. You could say that. Was the breakup acrimonious? We shouted at each other a bit. Then we stopped shouting. Then we stopped talking. And have you had any contact with your wife since you separated? Meetings, phone calls? No. No, I thought it best to just leave it to the solicitors. Less painful all round. Are you sure about that, Mr. Kendall? You see, your wife says that you've been harassing her. Why would I do that? Oh, the marriage was over long ago. In our hearts, we both know that. Well, life has to go on, doesn't it? Sugar? No, thank you. They all hate me. I wish I'd never come here. Darling, they don't all hate you. But you have to make an effort to make friends. You have to be a bit jolly. Why can't you just talk to him? It's not as simple as that. Your father and I... When you're older, you'll understand. I understand now. And you couldn't make it all right with him if you wanted to. Help me with the shopping. Maggie? Come in, come in. Katie, put the kettle on. Make Maggie a cup of tea. Oh. Uh, actually, um, the reason I'm here is, uh, well, I seem to have got lumbered with organising the Christmas concert. The village has one most years. Uh, what a good idea. Well, yes, uh, it gets everybody together and nobody takes it too seriously. Um, Jackie Bradley told me you were musical. We thought you might like to join in. The first rehearsal's on Saturday morning. I do play the piano a bit, but not very well these days. Katie's the one who loves to sing, though. You know I can't. You know what Dad says. Teenagers. <laughs> what do you do with them? All I'm saying is he seemed like a pretty reasonable bloke to me. Look, Craddock has no right to use you as a go-between. I went to him in an official capacity. Here, look, let me. I can cook a meal, Mike. I'm not totally useless. <clears throat> look, just because Frank Kendall had a cosy little chat with you and Craddock, it doesn't prove he's not harassing his wife. He accepts his marriage is over. What would he gain from harassing him? So, Raymond Craddock's training you in marital psychology now, is he? She could be lying for all sorts of reasons. Mike, the court believed her. That's why they've issued an injunction. You talked to Frank Kendall for, for what, half an hour? Maybe you're the one that's being lied to. Well, now look what you've made me do. Please, Jerry, don't get upset. 
I really care about you too, you know that. Once I get my divorce, things will be different, I promise. Until then, we, we have to be careful. We did say 10, didn't we? Yes, indeed. I, I was um, just... Uh, I'm sure you know Lord Ashfordley. How are you, Miss Bradley? Uh, his lordship just popped in on a matter of school business. As you know, he's our chairman of governors. No, I didn't know that. You know, Claude, you were right. If you forget about the bit at the back, this is a beautiful motor car. Yes, I'm sure it is. You, you see that sign with the 30 on? That was the speed limit and we're exceeding it. Oh, I'm not going that fast. Thank you. Slow down, love. You're a very nervous passenger, Claude. Look, where are you going? young man. Me? You were coming straight at me, you crazy old biddy. Hey, hey, we don't want that sort of language in front of a lady. You, you must have seen her old plates. She needs them. All right, all right, let's just all keep calm, shall we? Look at the state of my car. Who's going to pay for that, Hey, I hope you're well insured. Andy, what's happened? I've just demolished the bus shelter. I could run off the road by your pal Greengrass and some crazy old lady driving a hearse. Oh, get him a whiskey, Oscar. I knew it could only lead to trouble. Maybe we should call Maggie. Let's have a look. It's only a bit of a cut. A whiskey will be fine. Why didn't you call? I was beginning to think you weren't coming. The weather's been that awful. We were waiting two days for the tender to take us off the rig. Well, at least you're here now, eh? Yeah, only just. I mean, you can't really blame Agnes, can you? She's only a learning. You, you know what these young lads in sports cars are like. Yeah, and I know how fast you were going when you passed me. I know. It, 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 it's still knock for knock, though, isn't it? It's not a problem with the insurance, is there, Claude? Well, I've only just set it all up, and the application's still in the post. Well, you are in trouble, then, aren't you? Claiming me own insurance. It was their fault. Look, you want to get your car back on the road as soon as possible, don't you? Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you what insurance companies can be like. You're a young bloke with a sports car. She's a poor old lady. It could take months to sort out. Is he paying you or something? Oh, see yourself. All right. I'll sort it out myself. I knew you were a good lad, Andy. You gave him a drink on the house. Uh, Claude, can I have a word? I need you to do me a favour. I knew there'd be a catch in it. Very good of you to volunteer to help us, Greengrass. Uh, pleasure, my lord. Right, Bradley, you better explain your plan. Right, well, basically, Claude poses as a potential buyer of stolen venison. Using his extensive contacts, he puts it about that he's in the market and willing to pay top prices. And we flush out our poaching gang. Or at least the middlemen uh, they're selling to. That's the uh, theory. One way or another, it should lead us to the poachers. I really must get a cleaner. Julia, as your solicitor, it's not my role to judge you. But I do need to be in possession of all the relevant facts. My relationship with Lord Ashfordley is entirely professional. I resent any suggestion to the contrary. OK, I'm sorry. I hardly got a wink of sleep last night. He must have called a dozen times. I thought you said once the police have spoken to him. Hello, Katie. Jackie's come to see if you want to go to the rehearsal for the Christmas concert, darling. I'm going for a bike ride. Well, we'll be in the village hall. Perhaps you'd like to pop in later. I'll talk to Sergeant Craddock again and put some pressure on. It's okay. Men doesn't know I'm here. Well, I've got an appointment. Can I come? No. I don't want you upsetting your mother. You said if anything else happened, I should tell you. 
And? Well, the solicitor, Jackie, she came round this morning and she asked Mum about him. About Lord Ashfordley? What did your mother say? Well, she got really upset and she said it was entirely professional. But I think Jackie knew she was lying. <laughs> You're a good girl, Katie. You just keep me informed, huh? Dad, I just want us to be together again. I know you do, love. It's up to your mother now, isn't it? You get on home. I'm going to be late. Venison. Yeah, I'm much as I can get. I've got a very special customer, you know. Hey, get off. Here, do something useful. What dodgy deal you're planning now, Claude? That's for me to know and you to find out. Oh, David. Right, if we could all line up. Um, tallest at the back, shortest at the front. Maybe. Thank you. Hey, Maggie, can I have a word? Yes, Oscar. Do you mind telling me whose idea it was to open with Frosty the Snowman? I believe that was me. This is supposed to be a carol concert, not a pop concert. Frosty the Snowman is a popular classic. Anyway, I was under the impression the object of the exercise was entertainment. Yes, of an appropriate nature. In what way is Frosty inappropriate? Could we please discuss this later? Uh, Maggie, I would have thought the question of repertoire is fairly fundamental. Well, I think we should start with a carol, don't you? Oh, yes, Oscar, this was all discussed earlier. You don't seem like you've got much of a personal win. Don't get yourself. Yes. It's nearly Christmas. All the songs and carols on the song sheet were agreed at the organising meeting. Nobody told me about any organising meeting. Nor me. Look, there was a notice on the notice board. Everybody was invited. I don't saw that the cheer you to the fact that well, Frosty the Snowman come on, is I'll show you. I think we should start with a carol like our little town of Bethlehem. Yeah. Look, could we all please just start by lining up? You need to be in the background. when the principle of democracy is sorely overrated. Mike tells me you went to see Frank Kendall and found him to be a model citizen. I hardly think this is the appropriate time to discuss such matters. And I don't think it's appropriate for you to use my husband as a go-between when I came to you in an official capacity. But the woman is lying, Jackie. It's obvious. Either that or she's paranoid. Well, why don't you get her phones tapped? that would prove it one way or the other. Well, no, you're being totally ridiculous. Listen. You don't like the way I do my job, then you complain to the chief constable about it. I came here today to forget about things, and all you can do is plague me with this nonsense! <sighs> you all right, Craddock? My wife's left me, you know. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Three days ago. Came as a bit of a shock, I can tell you. She's been seeing somebody else for months. I had no idea. Well, that's hard. How could I not know? That's what I don't understand. Perhaps I just wasn't paying her enough attention. Well, the job can be pretty demanding. Certainly put pay to my marriage. Finding some women find being married to a policeman too much for them. 
No, I don't think it was that. I think she'd just had enough of me. Do you know how she met him? He's a damn tango teacher. Can you believe that? Well, that's a shame. Still, you never know. But you may come back. I don't think I'd have her back. Not after all those lies. I always prided myself on being an honest man. Turns out I'm just a fool. A strutting fool in a uniform. Come on, Sergeant. You're a policeman. And though not of my school, you're a damn good one. So just hang on to that. That'll get you through. Raymond. Come on, your turn. Me? But I can't drive. Well, but I teach you. Well, Mr. Greengrass is training me up to be a proper driving instructor. Well, he was. He gave me my first pupil. Come on, budge over. But it's against the law. I'm too young. No, not if it's off road. I mean, I learned to drive a tractor when I was 12. with a tango teacher. Oh, how awful. Well, she obviously prefers his pas de deux. That's ballet, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 there must be a bit nasty to, to do what they're doing. And then if they find out what I'm up to, they could be very nasty. Look, have you made contact? Oh, well, uh, let's just say I've, uh, I've had a bit of a tickle. Katie hasn't come home. I'm really worried. I think she might have gone to Frank's. Oh, they're all gone. Well, it is nearly seven. Hey, you're going to be in trouble with your mum. Won't make much difference. I'm always doing something wrong. Oh, can you play it then? A bit. But I'm not supposed to, though. Why not? My dad says it's annoying. Little girls who sing and make a noise all the time are annoying. I don't think they are. stood standing here if I wasn't, would I? Uh, are you on your own? I thought you'd be a younger fella. I was when I started waiting for you. Hey, can, can we get down to business?
Shoot it yourself, did you? You ask a lot of questions, Mr. Greengrass. Not as many as I ask. You're under arrest. I'll remember you, Greengrass. Quite a criminal record you've got here, Mr. Newton. Receiving stolen goods, assault. Court's not going to look very favourably on you, is it? So? So don't you think it would be wise to tell us how you came by that venison? Name your accomplices? Listen, copper. I bought that carcass fair and square. You reckon it's stolen? You prove it. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Newton. We will. Damn it all, Henry, not more. One of the lads just found these in bottom wood. Freshly killed. Reckon you must have surprised them, though, because the poachers didn't have time to carry the carcasses off. Yeah. I'm going to put a stop to this once and for all, Henry. If I have to walk the woods myself all night, we are going to get those villains. Sorry, Charlie. I, I didn't know who else to turn to. What's happened? I'm at my wit's end. Not more phone calls. Last night, someone broke all the windows in the porch. I thought Mrs Bradley was supposed to be sorting this out. You know, I'm going to go around and see this damned husband of yours myself. No, Charlie, you mustn't do that. Please, promise me. Oh, dear. Oh, no. This is where they must have butchered the carcasses. No. Oh. It's enough to put you off your steak and chips. <laughs> I've had enough of this. It's disgusting. Oh, metal ear tags. With any luck, they'll connect the carcasses to the Ashley estate. I'm off. Oh, hang on, Alf. Why go to the trouble of poaching so many deer if you can't sell them? If you're just going to leave them in there to lie and rot? That doesn't make any sense. Well, perhaps he's just a lousy businessman. The police think I'm lying, don't they? Julia, what's anyone supposed to think? I'm your solicitor, and you've certainly been lying to me. But not about Frank. Making out your husband is threatening you would not in itself stop a counterclaim for adultery, if that's what you're trying to do. If Julia's lied to you, Mrs. Bradley, it's been to protect me. Charlie, I don't want you involved in this. Frank is a vindictive man. If he had the least notion, he'd drag it all out in court. It would be a nightmare. I don't care about that. I don't care if the whole damn county's gossiping about us. Well, I do, I'm afraid. I've spoken to Mr. Kendall's solicitor. He tells me his client is well aware of your relationship, but has instructed him not to counterclaim on the grounds of adultery. Frank knows. I don't understand them. What's he playing at? Well, you tell me, Julia. Because your story and his actions just don't add up. So I think perhaps it's better you find yourself another solicitor. Come here, Mr. Beegrass. Come in, David. Oh, we're doing the Christmas grotto again, then? We certainly are. And we've got an added attraction. You know that little fall that Lord Ashfield's got? Oh, the little one looks like Bambi. Is he's going to let us borrow it. And I'm going to charge him a ton or a time to have the photos taken, because I'm going to tell him it's a genuine baby reindeer. But it's not. What difference does that make? Right. Wallet, cigarette lighter and some change. If you'd like to check that. And sign here, please, Mr. Newton. Ventress? Don't let him out of your sight. Right, Sarge. Good with them, you know, Katie. Hello. Hello. Mm. I'm 
nearly ready. Wait a minute. All right. Oh, hello, Katie. I thought you might be coming to the rehearsal. You've got a lovely voice. My dad doesn't like me to sing. Da, da, da. Why have a knock? That's why he left. Because of me. Because every time he came home, I made a noise all the time. Katie, I really don't think that's why your parents are getting a divorce. I just want them to be together again. And they would be, if everyone would just leave them alone. They're over there. The other bloke came in a Land Rover about half an hour ago. I had a look at it. It's got a gun rack in the back with a couple of rifles in it. Could be the accomplices we're looking for, then. It's a good chance. Right, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get a closer look. Two pints of bitter, please. You know him? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Let's just hope he didn't recognize me, though. I brought you your Christmas presents. Frank, will you just go? Oh, I am. I'm flying to Nairobi on Christmas Eve. My business here should be completed by then. What do you want? You planning to marry him? Lady of the Manor? I think you do it well. Who told you about him? Our darling daughter. Oh, she's a good obedient girl, aren't you, Katie? see you wondering about the gun. Am I going to shoot my unfaithful wife? Frank, please, not in front of Katie. I'd be foolish. I'd get caught. The husband is always the first suspect. And anyway, I've always loved you, Julia. What do you want from me? Oh, we had such a good time in the early days, didn't we? We could go anywhere, do anything. You were the one who insisted on having a kid. I oh, don't take it personally, Kitty. But kids are a pain. Enough to ruin any marriage, and having you certainly ruined ours. Don't do this to your own daughter. Me? What did I ever get a chance to do? As soon as you had a babe in your arms, that was it. You were off back to England. Goodbye, Frankie. You always put her before me. But it's all over and done with now, isn't it? What are you going to do? Don't worry, Julia. You'll get your divorce. Happy Christmas. I know how it sounds, but he's, he's always loved you in his way. No, he hasn't. I'm just a nuisance. A big mistake. Oh. Now, you listen to me, Katie. You are not a mistake. And you never have been. But some people, like your father, they're just a bit too selfish to share anything. They're jealous of anyone who tries to take the attention away from them. You are the most important person in the world to me. I love you, and I'm proud of you, and I always will be. So, I'm not a nuisance, even when I sing and make a row. Katie, you've got a lovely voice, and when you sing, don't just take my word for it. You give it a try and see what happens. Shall I? He's left the house and they've just passed me. Okay, I'll be better.
Better follow them. I think we've got our poacher. What? It turns out to be Julia Kendall's husband. Question is, can we catch him red-handed? Frank Kendall's been poaching. Well, if it is him, he's had at least a couple of dozen of Lord Ashley's deer. Look, it's uh, it's going to be a long night, so don't wait up. Look, Mike, hang on a minute. I don't know if it's relevant, but there's a connection between Julia Kendall and Lord Ashfordley. What sort of connection? A sort of connection that might make her husband extremely jealous. You mean Kendall's been popping Lord Ashfordley's deer to get back at him? Well, maybe Julia's been telling the truth all along. She insists he's a vindictive man. This could be his revenge. Well, if I was going to take revenge on the man who stole my wife, I'd want to do a lot more than just shoot his deer. Jackie, get on the phone to Ashfordley Hall. Tell Lord Ashfordley under no circumstances is he to go out into the woods after those poachers tonight. Watch the moon tonight. I hope they try it. We'll have them tonight. The housekeeper says Ashley's probably headed for the old spinny. He's determined to catch the poachers tonight. They don't get in first. Follow me. Stay with them, Alf. Craddock's on his way. Where's Ventress now? High Point Road, Sarge. They've just turned off into Ashfordley Woods. Looks like they're going for it. They're in the woods, Phil. I've lost sight of them now. Don't worry, Alf. I think we know where they're headed. Stay there. Bradley just saved your life, Your Lordship. In the chilly hours and minutes, I've uncertainty. I think you better put up the gun, Mr. Kendall. Unless you want to be charged with the attempted murder of a police officer as well. To feel you Come on, that's it. I'll try not to make a sequence. And to take your hand. That's it. Go on, David. Right, right, well, go see Mummy. Don't, don't forget your six switches. Right, come on, six one. I'm based on. Do you like the rain, dear? Right, okay. Yeah. Right there, go and see Mummy. That's the idea. Come on, next two. Now look at the camera. Look at the big smile. Big smile. All right, done it. There we are. Go and see Daddy. Good boy. Thank you very much indeed. Very kind. Now, Michael, how about having your picture taken? I'll do two of you for the price of one. He doesn't miss a trick, does he? Oh, I told you it's snow. Yeah, what about our central heating? Um, well, I can't do anything till after Christmas, so uh, we'll just have to cuddle up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, David. Yes. All right, thank you very much. This is a place. It's pretty gorgeous, isn't it? Fantastic. Do you want to sit here? Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Hi, Al. Oh, evening, Lord. It's uh, very generous uh, allowing us to have a concert here. Uh, time the old place was used more, Blaketon. <laughs> Nervous? A bit. Who's a kid? I hope she can sing. <laughs> 